you know, and my journey was different. Obviously, you know, I, I went through the ringer with with my band, Dilated Peoples, and took on a very traditional major label uh, record deal. You know, yeah. so you know, we were, we were committed for hundreds of thousands of dollars to do X, Y, Z, and you know, we started off as an independent band, and and obviously, you know, we, we did our best. We weren't going to turn away. You know, at the at the at the at that boom of of independent hip hop, you know, along with Rockus and Jurassic Five, and, yeah, that's uh, right, and Stone's Throw, you know, here's Dilated Peoples at ABB, and like you know, there was literal bidding bidding wars on all of these groups because we had all independently, like on some punk rock shit, go on, gone out, created our own buzzes, we're selling our own wax that we were pressing up out of the trunks of our cars, mm. you know, did all the A and R work for these labels. <laughs> KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Cool. Let's kick this off. Uh, where to start with you, my friend? Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, Central London for me, uh, West Coast for my guests. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Um, also, everybody's got a television app, free download to sport and nice. It's a street culture business, strictly for the sports. Um, and wow, this gentleman that's a, a special guest, he is a uh, uh, yeah, he's one of those sports vets that not only changed the shape of the way uh, we beat juggling, DJing, ITF world champion, noted, uh, dilated people, the world famous beat junkies, the list goes on. And oh, what a pleasure to have him on side. DJ Babu inside the place. How are we, gent? Killer Keller, my bro. My pleasure. The, the, the pleasure is all mine, man. Thank you for the awesome intro. That was tight. That was tight, isn't it? You know, after so many episodes, like, in fact, after so many episodes of getting that wrong, I'm finally getting it right. But more so, I've done so many episodes, man. And I'm I'm surprised it's, you know, we've, we finally got it together. It's such a pleasure to see you, my brother. You know what? I want to pick up where we were off camera and uh, rewind a little, you know, and congrats. Sure. Congrats, you know, everybody. We, 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 started, we started having a really great combo, bo- and we hadn't started recording yet, but I was right in the middle of telling Kella, <laughs> congrats, it was a bit of, re- of a reunion because we probably haven't seen each other in, I don't know, 15, 20 years, maybe At least. we've seen each other. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I was just expressing to Kella how, how it really inspires and warms my heart to see, you know, fellow peers, um, you know, that I've lost track with to see, them evolving and growing and doing all right in 2022 and uh especially to you man congrats on the podcast man thank my you, my, you. Brother. my brother it sounds like you know you took that magic that you used to do on the on the beatbox and, and you transcended and uh man congrats on all the success man my brother, thank you thank you so much it means a lot and i alluded to it before we started you know to to finally get you on and i know that the public the peoples have been really looking forward to having you on and you know the fact that all the other guests have sung praises in the in the DJ and turntablers world, and uh, the fact that it's 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 got indirectly to you. It's been on the airwaves and the wavelength that my peers like yourself, people that were in the same paddock of us, you know, jumping on different DJ lineups and different club lineups. You know, it's it's great that you know what I mean. That we're here now and doing it. I mean, we've got a lot of history, brother. For sure, for sure, man. Yeah, we were just talking about I. I don't know how many times we ran into each other. It, you know, I might have been out there DJing with myself or the junkies or dilated, but really, really great to see you, man. In this world where we are, you know, we we were touring, we were doing stuff, we were doing multiple stuff. So at any one given time, there's this new added world of social media platformage that's gone on, you know. And and in one sense, it had it not been for, you know, had it not been for you know the lockdown, we wouldn't have this flourishing new scene. And the likes, as we were saying, the likes of shortcut. 
and you know and Ripmatic they they're on it um sure. and uh, and it's it's kind of breeded this whole new um ecosystem hasn't it so sick yeah it's 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 so dope i love it when you know there's you know it seems like every 5 to 7 years something comes along that just changes the game or or even more so levels the playing field yeah and you know we were just talking about this off air too but you know, I'm lucky enough to have a couple of my guys in my crew, um, Melody and Shortcut, Brett Maddock with Soundcheck, of course, too. But, mm-hmm. you know, these guys, Mello, Mello and Shortcut just got fresh off of going to Jazzy Jeff's, you know, uh, birthday celebration weekend, which was like just blessings upon blessings. But hell yeah, you know, I love the I love the the fact that, you know, Twitch came through on, you know, streaming came through and it was tricky. And it seems like we found a groove with Twitch for now. You know, it's going to it won't be forever. But it's beautiful that even during this pandemic, DJs were able to just, you know, take lemons and turn it into lemonade, as they say, you know, and, 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 you know, looking at DJing and I look at, you know, the DJs who are flourishing, you know, you know, a lot of them, um, you know, if you, you know, depending DJ to DJ, but, you know, whatever situations, whatever happened to the landscape, most of these DJs already have been survived ups and downs um, having to reinvent themselves, having to adapt to, you know, the different changes in the landscape and the climate. So, you know, part of me is not surprised. I'm not surprised Shortcut is flourishing. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm, I'm not surprised that Melody is flourishing. I mean, there was a time when Shortcut probably had to turn down gigs as Shortcut, as an invisible scratch pickle, as a beat junkie, um, you know, and, and yeah. turntablism died. And all of a sudden, Short reinvents himself to become this amazing dance hall selector, an amazing uh, uh, 45 selector. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he broadened his horizons beyond just, you know, turntablism and, and his reputation because he's always been a great all around DJ. And, you know, even all the way up to what he started with uh, the, the Twitch, you know, I feel like he was one of the earliest Twitch adopters. And, yeah. you know, that was a shortcut once again, just dealing with you know, what we've had to do as independent artists or as DJs, and that's being able to have the foresight and, and, and survive and manage, you know, our business is so up and down, bro. Mm-hmm. And, and especially for DJs, you know, you, you might catch some breaks here and there, but, you know, any successful DJ, they'll tell you they're always planning five, 10 moves ahead because everything we have yeah. is just, you never know, especially these days, that everything could ch- just change in a week and in a few days, you know, so things just come and go so fast, but props to everybody that's been streaming. I, you know, I stream a lot um, more and more in terms of teaching. Teaching has taken over my life. So the, the streaming I do is um, more uh, on the education side because I'm, uh, I've been full time teaching at our school that we opened up in 2017, the Beach Junkie Institute of Sound. So I've been I personally been a little quiet on it, but I have been kind of like stewing on getting really inspired by all the homies, uh, you know, killing it online and. I love to put my own twist on it and start a regular stream soon too. But um, yeah, we were just saying online, if, you know, if you're not up and ready to stream at this point in, in, in your DJing, you're really missing out on something, you know, social media as well. You know what I mean? Like yeah. no, no one got business cards anymore, bro. It's just like, go to my Instagram or go to my TikTok, <laughs> you know, go to my Facebook, whatever it is, you know, yeah. um, here's my, here's my EPK on my, on my, you know, on my social media, the whole, the whole game has changed and, yeah. you know you, there, it's good and bad you know i try to you know take it all with a grain of salt yeah i feel that and it's interesting you say that dj djs are always ahead of the curve aren't they there's this impulsive reaction that you guys have it's, it's like it actually it's, it, it borders compulsive obsessive to, to, to some degree you know the, no, the technical I'm requires you, I'm, glad and everything. Brought, I'm glad you brought that up compulsive <laughs> obsessive <laughs> And, 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 you know, it's funny. I know you can relate to that because to, to get to the, you know, to get to that, what, whatever, five, three, one percent of, of your art form or your craft, yeah. it requires a bit of obsessive compulsiveness, if not a lot, you know, and, and growing up, that was something that I was discouraged from. You know, I remember growing up and I had a very compulsive personality if i was into something i wasn't just into it i, I like I, I was i was it if, like, if i wanted to, if i wanted to, if i liked skateboarding not only was i trying to learn how to skate and do moves i was in to the style the fashion who's who in the skate world <laughs> you know what i mean all the details you know yeah and i always and like you know obviously i got obsessed over things that you know most parents probably wouldn't be excited for their kid to be into whatever you know things that don't have a long-term safe uh, result you give know? me an example of that of, of an age oh, what what specifically you know, you know 12 years old i definitely was into 
skateboarding. I, I remember at one point it evolved into you know, maybe a little earlier, maybe like nine or 10. And then I got into freestyle, freestyle BMX. Ooh. Um, you know, even, even younger, if, you know, if I was into a toy, like I have to have the whole universe if I could. <laughs> I'm into Star Wars, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I've got the canteen. I've got the little canteen set and the Millennium Falcon. You know what I mean? And I know yeah. the stories. So that really was something I'm glad that I, I, that stuck with me because that, that was everything about, you know, that I think, you know, was a big part of me being successful in DJing because I noticed that with a lot of my peers and a lot of my idols is that obsessive compulsiveness. I mean, the world can be burning around you, but I am going to find that break or I'm going to learn that scratch. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Or I'm going to get that little bit more practice in because that's just what it is, you know? So, uh, you know, I do encourage that with my students and and even my children you know what i mean you have to be laser focused if you really want to get good at something i truly believe it's it's ten thousand hours minimum you know at yeah. whatever you're trying to get good at but you know you can't let the world burn down around you you know you gotta you know what i mean you gotta <laughs> you know you gotta be realistic about things but you know you gotta put in that work you know and you know so that's that's kind of the um you know i think it's important like if you really you know we can all just do this as a hobby you know, mm. you know, I'm gonna beatbox and just do it for myself. And record some jams. I might just scratch and DJ in my in my bedroom. That's fine, you know. But you know, if you consider what cats do to maintain and sustain off this, mm. it's, it's a it's a very monk like um, approach. Oh know? my god, it is. Of, yeah, a lot of sacrifice. Like, you know, I, you know, like many years, like yeah, I passing up um, going out and partying, going out and and, and having other hobbies. Mm. you know and you know yeah. you know, you don't really think about it like that at the time because i just loved it so much yeah but now as an older guy with you know children responsibilities i am like you know i'm looking for eight days in the week you know what i mean and yeah and, you know so it's a different different thing than when you're 19 and just throwing caution to the wind but you know like it's really you know some of us are naturally gifted and god gives us you know gifts and things that we don't get but even for those even for the mm. coaches you know what i mean like the perfect thing is if you can be gifted and work hard and have that work ethic. Oh, that's it. You've got it. And you know, you're not working. You're, it's a love thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's a, it's a dedication that you don't even realize that's happening, you know? Um, so anyways, I, I'm rambling, man, but you know, you know, you're a fellow artist. So you, you know what I'm talking I about. I get it. Steven Tyler from Aerosmith, bit of a stretch this as an analogy, but um, you know, he said, you dream it. <laughs> To, to, to coin his song, you dream it till you become it. Like, yes, that, that's what happens. You, and there's been loads of examples, isn't there? Like, like Jazzy Jeff, like he would, he, would, he can't, you can't be Jazzy Jeff anywhere else. Like he's become it to the point that he's in his own echo chamber. <laughs> he's, sure. he's, do you know what I mean? Such a big inspiration, Jeff. That's a great example. Mm. It's you crazy. Know, uh, talk about like you know ups and downs and you know so many generations he's been able to touch um mm. and and the whole time to consider there's always been two turntables and a mixer in front of him and, and it's, it's been a very so close to the art form what he's done yeah. you know and talk about reinventing himself you know there was a time when you know obviously jeff was in the jazz jeff the fresh prince were winning grammys and you know the you know like, he's just touring the world the winning you know music awards yeah and, and it's it's really it's really easy to you know to even get a little fraction of that kind of work and and being in that kind of world and really lose touch with where you came from and yeah. I've always been so like impressed with Jeff on you know when he didn't have to make connections. I was a young DJ and you know I I don't even really think Jeff knew me yet. And I remember like you know dilated coming to Philly you know on, being on tour. Mm -hmm. And somehow him connecting with me, picking me up, buying me cheesesteaks, taking me to his studio and hanging out mm -hmm. like we not known each other. And, and, you know, and I don't I don't remember anything before that, man. You know, and it's been like that ever since. You know what I mean? Like mm. and it wasn't like he was he wanted anything from me. It was just on some like. Yo, another DJ's in town who's like me, Look, man, why wouldn't I want to hang out? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. You know, and, and uh, he still, even up to now, like he still has that, um, that you know, he just loves it. He has so much fun. If you watch him, he's still having fun. Mm. And, you know, and um, I, I, I strive to like stay in that zone as much as I can. You know, it's hard when you put your life on, on your art. You know, that's, 
you know, if I have yeah. any advice for anybody out there, is like do it without putting the stress of your life on it for as long as you can. It's true, time. isn't it? You know, because things change. You know, things change, and it puts a lot of pressure on on the purity of your art and and what you yeah. do. You know, like I said, I think that's why Jeff is. You know, there's there's a lot of reasons why Jeff is still here and so impacting. I think one is that that genuine love. The other two is he just gives. You know, he's just yeah. so, he's just you know speaking karma wise, his karma is like great. You yeah. know, what I mean? good juju. Just, yeah, he does. He did. You know, not too many people get in that position and just give so you know so effortlessly. You know mm. what I'm saying? Found a knowledge and literally physically giving to you know so many people, and he's he's done so much for the junkies and us, and um, you know, really inspiring and literally you know putting us and connecting us with things that we would have never been able to do. You know, so but mm. hats off, to Jeff, man, and belated birthday to to. Someone I'm I'm so appreciative, lucky to call a friend. You know? Oh, you very lucky man. You know what? My 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 mind went for a second there when you were talking about people that the pressure that can be on um, as you get on in your career of of staying true to the creative that the the the, uh, the what's the word innocence I suppose. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's funny how isn't as you get into uh, you know, the middle of our careers, which we are, and and still rising, still going up up in the elevator. Oh yeah. But, oh, yeah. but but there are things, there are factors that come into play. I was talking to a friend the other day, uh, and talking about you know how they're not inspired, um, at the moment, and you know the moon has to be aligned with the stars and stuff. And I I don't have that problem anymore because I I, I ship the work. Do you know what I mean? And and then sometimes I think to myself, hey, is that is that the right way to think? I mean, as a DJ, you're shipping the work quite frequently on a Friday and Saturday night. Is that normal? Right. You know, I think for everybody, that's that's probably a question that they'd have to answer for themselves. You know, us us being artists, it's 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 hard to even compare our, you know, individuals' lives to each other because there's so many different variables that come into play, right? So, mm. but 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 for speaking for myself, you know, I. I definitely hit a place where DJing became a job. Mm. You know, it, it was crazy. You know, I felt like I was nervous to DJ. It became, a, a, you know, you, if I had a gig that night or I had a show, you, you didn't want to be around me. I would just be a nervous ball of energy that was not looking forward. It was like, you know, and, and it became work. You know, I have to be in front wow. of people, get on the decks and cut it up and, you know, I remember snapping out of it one day and just saying, like, wow, there was there was a day when that's all you wanted to do. <sighs> you know, and my journey was different. Obviously, you know, I, I went through the ringer with with my band Dilated Peoples and took on a very traditional major label uh record deal, you know. Yeah. So, you know, we were we were committed for hundreds of thousands of dollars to do XYZ. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we started off as an independent band and and obviously, you know. We, we did our best. We weren't going to turn away, you know, at the, at the, at the, at that boom of, of independent hip hop, you know, along with Rockus and Jurassic five and, yeah, that's right. and stones throw, you know, here's dilated peoples at ABB. And like, you know, there was literal bidding, bidding wars on all of these groups because we had all independently, like on some punk rock shit, go on, gone out, created our own buzzes. We're selling our own wax that we were pressing up out of the trunks of our cars, mm-hmm. you know, did all the A and R work, for these labels you know with the exception of a couple labels like every label came to dilated people's barking at our door you know promising us this and that wow. um and we ended up going with capital records because they let us keep creative control but on top of that they let us release all of our vinyl on on abb we continued to do it on our independent label but they would have so cds and, and tapes or whatever at that time so you know we try to get creative with it and and you know, stay true to ourselves as much as we could. We're not going to do this unless we could do us. But I tell you, Kella, like, you know, you know, people looked at us like we were crazy doing a song with Kanye West uh, this way that all of a sudden the video was on BET and on MTV. They walk into the mall and all of a sudden their little brothers and sisters know who dilated peoples were. And, <laughs> you know, we thought we were, you know, we were doing us, you know what I mean? At the, but at the time, you know, people had put us into this mold, you know, too, of, um, you know, you you know the whole grind of it, yeah. like keeping it real, yada yada yada. Mm. So that whole hustle and bustle, and the pressure from the label to do things, you know, and and make us, in some opinions, people grow, and some opinions, you know, like going against what we've built up. 
you know, either way, I'm, I'm proud of every single record we put out. But just the whole game of the major label, you know, there's times when the label just starved us, you know, literally just starved us, you know, over power moves and control over our careers and our career wow. decisions, you know. So mm -hmm. I'm lucky, you know, I, I was in a band with two really not only amazing, you know, obvious MCs and a producer over there, but Evan Rock happened to be very savvy on the business side. You know, mm -hmm. this is not the first time Rocka has you know, weaseled our way in and out of record contract and, 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 and crazy verbiage that these people throw at you. <laughs> these guys, you, know? you know, they, they really, um, not most people like end up, you know, from our position in the, in the hole, in the red, still owing yeah. the record company and still albums to fulfill and really Very much so. career, you know, for us, we, you know, I'd like to say we, we at least broke even. And then I think on, you know, for us, you know, the, on the stuff that you can't quantify with zeros and ones and dollar signs, I mean, I think we pimped out our experience on capital as much. You know, our, our it, we were able to see the world and, mm. and, and create an amazing platform and touch people doing what we do. And, you know, like I said, and we're not in debt. I mean, we got out of there and completed our contract. And, mm. you know, we went on to, um, you know, I think at that time it was, it was, it was a point where I started loving it again. You know, once I had that pressure gone of like, you know, you get into the cycle, oh, we put out a new album. Now we got to jump on the bus for like the next thing, the next thing. Yeah. yeah. And then we got to do all these promos, do the radio run. Okay. And then we got to do, you know, it became like this thing. And then, you know, personally, you know, it took a toll on our, our relationships as well. Those guys, I love them to death, but you know, like they're brothers, like, you know, so you know how brother, brother friendships are and you put all that pressure of everything on it as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, by the time we got out of our record deal, I really had made, finally understood that I needed to come back. So to the beginning of all this, you know, so that's kind of where I'm at. I've been for like the last five to seven years was, um, you know, I spent many years in that rap game. You know, I, I, I really love production as well. So, you know, I was over there trying to like, you know, I want to be just like Pete Rock. I want to just be like, like DJ Premier or Marley Marl, whoever. So, yeah. you know, a lot, a lot of what I did on the turntables was, was just relegated to my little 10 minute solo in the dilated show. Yeah. You know, I, ste I stepped away from battling. I became a studio rat. I'm, you know, crazy digging and just trying to me and evidence every day, just closing down record shops, just trying to learn about technology, making beats, making beats, making beats, recording, recording, recording. And so I, I kind of like, you know, me and my turntable side, like had a big, you know, we took a break from each other for a long time. Mm. And, you know, like I would say from like 2000 to like 2008, nine, like I was, you know, I got to the point where I would go to a scratch cipher and I would, I, I would just be like, Oh, I'm good. I don't want to scratch. Like, I, you know, like I'm looking at what these motherfuckers are doing. I was like, Jesus Christ, where the yeah, fuck have yeah. I been? You know? And when I started paying attention, you know, I was blown away at like just how, crazy the skill level had gotten how far off you know out of touch i was and 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 then all of a sudden d and the rest of the guys are talking about you know what's our next move you know we, we started this amazing record pool which was really awesome that was our first kind of you know us we all mm -hmm. keep secrets we're, we're from that era of keeping secrets keeping it real and keeping secrets yeah, no, yeah, we don't, yeah, we don't yeah. share any of our science <laughs> so we finally you know we finally started our record pool you know, and, and that was beautiful. And, and, you know, we, I think we all, you know, if we didn't fully learn, we started being like, okay, what's, why wouldn't we share what we do and, 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 and our, you know, all this knowledge and, and mm -hmm. things shared to the next generation of us. Um, and, you know, we brought up the idea of, of teaching, te teaching and starting a school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was perfect timing for me. You know, I just finished, you know, we had done our rhyme sayers record, our, our post capital music with, with um rhyme sayers evidence had started doing some solo stuff rock had done his solo stuff and yeah and we came back to do um our last record on rhyme sayers directors of photography and you know at that time i i, I was really like i was like i think this is a time i think because the the you know the idea came up a little bit earlier and i was like oh, i can't imagine teaching right now I was, I was still on that shit like oh man i'm not giving away my shit oh, man, yeah and people are gonna bite my shit, you know. <laughs> I, still that, I still had that fucking mentality. Yeah, but you know, after it slowed down, after dilated, you know, and, and you know, and I saw, you know, what was I gonna do next? And when the subject of teaching came up again, it just made so much sense. But I was very apprehensive. I wasn't. How do I put it? I wasn't apprehensive, but I was just straight up scared. I was like, how am I gonna call myself a teacher? 
and I'm like, I really haven't science my shit. You know, I'm a very instinctive, oh, I'm a very instinctive doer, Kella. I don't know how mm-hmm. what your what your process is, but I've always been the one to make that excuse. Oh, I don't want to learn too much because I I'm gonna lose my natural funk. I'm self-taught. <laughs> I, you know, I just close my eyes, it just comes out. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I know where I know where to start and end. I know where to start recording and stop and you know, and where things should how should sound, but you know, I'm not gonna count the bars. I'm just gonna yeah. do, it, do it from the heart, you know what I mean? That's pure, you know. I but, do. I know exactly what you mean. I, but, I, I'm. I'm the. I'm the. What is it? Um, I forgot who said it. Um, Bill Gates, I think it was. Give a. Uh, give a lazy person a hard job, and they'll find the quickest way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Easily. Oh, real. <laughs> yeah. oh, real. Well, you know, I, I've had that. I've had that mentality for a long time. Even when I when I got heavily into production, you know, we hit that era where it was like. You know, okay, we're gonna sample and we're gonna interpolate because we can't we can't clear samples anymore. So, mm. you know, so I remember the topic of you know, I, you know, I'm not too bad. I could play a bass line. You know, I could I could do a little bit and figure things yeah. out. I might, be, I might not be able to jam with a band, but you put me alone in the studio and then, you know I'll put shit in key. You know what I mean? I'll make it sound mm. fly. But you know, I remember the topic came up of, of like, oh, why don't you just take some you know take take some rudimentary lessons and just learn some basics and it'll probably step your game. I remember being like, oh no. Nah. <laughs> Hell no! Nah. That's gonna ruin my natural <laughs> funk, man. You know, no one taught Carlos Santana. You know what I mean? I'm, just, mm. you know. And then, but when it came down to teaching, it really struck me funny. You know, Mr. Chalk, uh, my my one of my other brothers, he's he's the one who holds it down at the school with me as well. He's our dean of students at school, and he's a teaching veteran out of us. And he was the one who gave us the confidence to do it because he had been teaching at the other local school for you know 10 plus years he had been teaching 10 plus years but he was a director over there for about 10 years so um you know we really picked his brain a lot about it and i remember one day we did like a little pseudo like okay let's talk about how we teach guys you know we're just standing around some turntables he's like babs teach me how to do something anything but you know think of a technique i'm like okay this scratch and he's like okay teach it to me now treat it as if i know zero and you're going to teach it to me and, and Kella, I didn't know where the, f- I didn't even, up to that point, we were already invested in a space. Yeah. We're supposed to start building a curriculum. Like, it's like, you know, we got like six, seven months, we had a little time, but we had to get it together before we open the doors, put a price on what we're doing, changing, you know, making this a, a seven day a week thing for yeah. my life. And he hits me with, all right, teach me how to, show me how you teach a baby scratch bag. <laughs> Can I just say something at this point? We've had so many of you guys talking about the school, doing the school, celebrating the school. You're the first one of the beat junkies that actually talked about how the hell did we ever get to this point? Like the beginning stage, like that's some real talk right there, Bubs. Because no, Bro, Ella, I had it dawned on me. I was like, I was like, my 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 instruction at that time was like, yeah, you just put your hand down, just go do what you do what you. I mean, that was literally what I thought was like. And he's like, nah, bro. Like, I don't know anything. I've never touched a turntable. I don't even know how to put the needle on the record. How do I even find that sound you're scratch? You know, and I and I was like, I was like, whoa, I gotta really go back to the drawing board. So on top of that, I I got super paranoid, first of all. You know, and mind you, we're building the school. You know, we, we have a space and we're we're already paying for it. We but we still gotta like get the equipment. We gotta paint this place and fix it up. And you're invested. You're already off the you're, you're off to the races, and you can't oh, go back. We, you know, we've already said to ourselves, we need to open the doors no later than this, or, or we start going in the fucking hole, guys. Like it, it got like that. <laughs> Shit. So, we, so not only are we building a curriculum, building the space, trying to build a staff. Huh? The craziest thing was, you know, I started getting paranoid about the whole just the teaching thing alone. I was like, dude, I need to rethink my whole fucking game, and it was. Amazing, Keller. I literally, people say they do it, but I literally went back to the beginning. I went back to the beginning and retaught myself everything. And That's amazing. Bro, I don't, I didn't realize how many holes I had in my game. I, I, I didn't know how many, I didn't realize how many times I made excuses for myself not to learn something the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember sessions yeah. over the years, I'm hanging out with D Styles or Mellow or Qbert or someone having scratch sessions. They might, they might be like, I'm like, oh, that's a sick pattern you just did, you know, and I would go home and instead of really trying to learn it, I would find my own take or my own version of it. And I would be satisfied with that. And then I would lean on that like, yeah, because I don't want to bite. I don't want to do it exactly like Hubert. You know what I'm saying? I just want to I just want to just be able to do my own kind of thing and I'll feel okay about it, you know, Mm -hmm. which is 
okay. But when I got to the level of really saying, I understand what I'm doing. I'm a master of my craft. That was some bullshit. I, I was like, dude, everything I should be able to do, I should be able to talk about and articulate. Like, that's it. I should be able to do a technique 10 times out of 10, drop of a dime, and be able to tell you how to do it forward, backwards, reverse, the whole nine. And I really went through my whole arsenal of everything I did, and I refused to teach anything unless I felt 200% confident I'm teaching it correctly, and, and, it worth, and it's worth my students. That's investment. amazing, man. And I got a lot of that from Chalk, you know, and D-Styles as well. I didn't realize... You know, everyone knows D style is the best scratch in the world. Did, can I say that? Can I, if that, if that's not I think it's, a yeah, I think it's out there. I think without question, is, is without that question. A, already an understood fact? That's that on this podcast, he's in the elite top top sure. three. Yeah, even literally as recently as yesterday, I still go to D for advice about class and what I teach because I didn't even know before we opened the school, he already had a whole system in his head. He hadn't written anything down, but his. Mm comprehension level when it comes to scratch and Keller, yeah. bar none, bar none. He, he taught me how to go back and understand things that I've been doing for 20 years that I couldn't explain and understand. So, and then child wow. is like the most patient and just inspirational teacher. So, you know, I leaned on them a lot to start developing my teaching style and getting the confidence to stand up in front of a class or even call myself an instructor of any sort. But it's been an amazing journey, bro. I'm like, wow. I've never been better. I don't really DJ that much. In one way, I don't really go out and DJ, but I DJ more than ever my day. For some reason, I'm lucky enough to say my day still starts and ends with a turntable and records. Mm -hmm. And I have that hunger again from, it feels like, it feels like 93 for me, bro. I just oh, look forward so to practicing. You know, it's a little different. I practice, you know, my class, you know, like putting together my lesson plans and really, um, you know, between BeatJunkies.tv and the classes I have at school, I mean, I teach like five days a week, probably, you know, not to mention private, mm -hmm. whatever else I'm doing. Um, but that that fire I used to put into dilator, I, I used to put into a DMC battle or something like mm. that fire is transferred into, you know, really trying to, you know, teach this shit right that that we've been doing. And we take for granted, you know. Yeah, I do. I mean, I guess there's commonality there with, uh, you know, if a physical like a personal trainer i suppose where they teach somebody's like they're not actually training for themselves but they're constantly exercising throughout the day doing what they do and and what it's necessary i that's funny you bring that up because i think that's the thing that drives me right now is, is like i you know early on i would literally have bad dreams like in my dream someone would ask me how to do something and i couldn't explain it or i couldn't mm. execute it i've had that in the first year of OBS. really <laughs> I used to just have anxieties about, you know, putting myself up there in front of the crowd, in front of a class. And I remember it being so hard to like, you know, if, it's, if Chalk was over there, it was there, the veteran, I was okay. But I, I used to just get so scared to think, oh man, I don't know if I could do this by myself. Like, yeah. you yeah. know, now, now it's, you know, it's amazing now, but you know, now that paranoia is more like, it's, it's, it's still there, but it's on a different level because my as our we get better as teachers our students get better so i'm like over here like damn some of my students are getting so fucking good like mm -hmm. like what am i gonna teach these motherfuckers if i don't stay sharp you know if i don't stay on all this new shit so not only did i relearn everything i i, I literally rewired my whole shit you know when they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks i am testament that it's possible man you know oh and God. i was just and i was just talking to you know you know another brother of ours uh, harry love no you of know, course you know, we did a free class um, every once in a while just to promo what we do on BeatJunkies.tv, our, our live streaming classes we do seven days a week. We do, we do them free like once a month just to promote. And mm -hmm. so I was online doing a free class on Twitch maybe two two Thursdays ago. And Harry was in there. And, 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 and just like you, Harry's like relatively like our generation, you know, and especially for, sure. for, for DJ stuff. You know, me and him come from that same era of styles and techniques he loves you, bro. Like, he only lives down the road from me. Like, I know Harry. Oh, that's what's up. This is awesome. It made me feel so good. But, you know, in my warm up drills that I do, it's not era based, but, you know, it's, you know, we start with foundation type stuff and then we start moving into you know, more of the newer eras. We start doing mm -hmm. flares and then we start doing all this new, new shit like boomerangs and autobonds and all this shit. So as we're going, I see Harry in the chat having a blast, killing it doing good, keeping up, you know, every once in a while I stop and I check in with the chat, you know, if you're keeping up with me, you know, throw some fire emotes in the chat, you know, you know, and he was Love it. In the chat. He was having a blast. He had never done the class before, but as we started getting to the new era, 
new era of stuff. I noticed in the chat, Harry was like, bollocks, Babs, I'm out of here. I don't know what to do. I'm, <laughs> I'm about to throw my turntable out the window. <laughs> and, you know, and after the warm ups were done, you know, you know, I'd have a little Q&A part and I check in with the class and I'm like, yo, Harry, you know, I see you getting frustrated. Don't get frustrated, man. You know, and, and I went into this little story where I was like talking about this time before we opened the school where I was like so embarrassed of my skills, bro. I was like so rusty. I'm like, bro, if you know what I'm, I'm not going to do blind alley ever again. I cannot do this fucking routine again. I'm not going <laughs> to do that same fucking flare. So, hold on one second. For those of you that don't know blind alley, this was an <laughs> iconic beat juggle that, you know, defined an, an era of, of beat juggling of its time. Right. I mean, let's be honest with you. You pioneered with oh, that. I appreciate it. No, wow. I, I'm really proud of it. I don't mean to make it sound like that, but you know, like, like my DJing had turned into a, like I said, a 10 minute routine of mm-hmm. doing the same. You know, I had like an arsenal of like, I don't know, eight routines that I've, I've been doing with dilated for like 20 years. Mm-hmm. I got to that, you know, I really looked in the mirror when the school opened and I was like, dude, I need to relearn this shit. And not only that, I need to like up my game because, mm-hmm. because dude, like the, the, you know, if you thought a kid was good, you know, if you thought kids like a track were good, I mean, look at now, I mean, mm-hmm. we got like eight, like, like Rena and K Swiss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these motherfuckers yeah, yeah. are beasts, you know, so serious, serious, you know, we're just at a different place. So I was like. I have to learn all this new shit. So I told Harry, I'm like, hey, Harry, I was just there like four years ago, man. I was, mm-hmm. I, I looked at these turntables stumped. I, I thought I'd never learn anything new again, man. I go, but, but uh, I got inspired again. And and I'm like, it's possible, bro. You just got to do a little bit every day. And we had a good chat and he had, he actually had a breakthrough in the next drill. It was dope. It was really oh, dope. Was dope. You know, just talking to someone from my generation, I could, I can relate, dude. I, mm-hmm. you know, if you haven't listened to, to, to DJing or scratching in a while and you listen to what, they're doing now it's so mm-hmm. intimidating bro it's so like mm-hmm. where the fuck have i been I, I and i'm sure beatboxers can relate i'm sure b-boys can relate i'm, I'm yeah. totally there bro like i feel you like right and big up all the beatboxers out there you know aside from obviously the the, the world that i'm doing with podcasting and stuff you know i don't orbit in the same playing field as beatboxers do now. I'm I'm a watcher right. and and lo- love watching. And sometimes they'll do a sound, and I'm I'm already figuring in my head. Oh, they do that and they do that. That's how they get that. That's how they get that. But do I actually go and do it? No. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, you know I'm right. saying. It's no, and, and with me and and me and getting better, I I'm glad you said that because I'm not over here thinking I'm going to enter a battle. I'm definitely not thinking that I can even compete with anybody, but. It's for my own, it's, it's for my own, like, you know, so I feel secure as a teacher, you know, cause yeah, we have sure, no way sure. of really, you know, I mean, we're working on it, but it's not like you can really go somewhere and say you're, you're certified as a DJ of this caliber or at all, you know? So, and cause DMC and ITF, they hold weight within the community for um, sure. in you the know, same but, vein as Rocksteady or, you know, or any of them, beat junkies, which, which relatively speaking is gold, you know I mean? Yeah. That's, you know, you can't even put a value on that kind of value you're talking about. Mm. But, you know, in the world of opening up a brick and mortar business, you know, any of our notoriety is either non-existent or or it becomes kind of like a, uh, I don't know, like a, a, a rock star camp kind of thing. There's a novelty to it. Yeah. You know, so I, you know, as much as I'm going to be real, if you knew about the bee junkies or the visionaries or dilated or the invisible scratch pickles, like, and, and this was a dream to, to practice with one of us or train with us I, I embrace that if you just want to learn how to dj you can give a fuck about who who's teaching you mm. we take you too you know what i mean mm. but, you know at the end of the day though um i feel like our goal isn't to like turn people into professional djs but to you know to turn them into those compulsive obsessive lovers of the art that whether i'm making zero dollars or a million bucks i'm gonna do this regardless for me you know so oh god i love that i love you just said that in our experience it's been, it's been amazing man and like you know there's been times where i thought these doors are gonna close but somehow like you know the community we built it's been it's been amazing and it's all different ages and shape size and colors of you know are you know what's been most surprising actually is the number of, of women djs we have and they're mm. fucking they're so dope. I mean, like women just learn way better than guys. Kella, yeah. it's, it's scary. It's scary. Like fellas, fellas, get on your shit because yeah, yeah, they're yeah. coming for us. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but, 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 you know, like as much as teaching, you know, is, is like, it, 
like I said, like when you really love something, you don't even really think what you're doing. I just have become obsessed with teaching and trying to become the best teacher I can. So I don't fucking have an anxiety attack in front of people and fall out. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's simple. It's that simple to me to, 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 you know, as to what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, for, for there, it, it's been a good experience. And I feel like, you know, every good experience I've had in my career, it was, it was, it was during times I was just so in love with what I was, what I was doing. Mm. And when I made money, it wasn't even the point, you know, when I made the most money or had the most, not even money, just had the most success mm. is when I was just, you know, just really just loving what I was doing to death, you know? And, um, it's, it yeah. really does say a lot. You can look at, at artists or whatever people into craft, a, a craft or art form. And you can tell the people who are just looking to get to an end goal. And you can tell people who are just, this is just their happy place. <laughs> and it's, it's really the difference, you know? Happy place. Um, there is a there is a place where, and obviously you've come out the other side with all the frustrations, things, and and that that um, relentless shipping at the work. And now you're you're teaching the thing you love, and you're doing it. Then there's the other side to it, where you have curiosity and you have a warm feeling in your heart, where it's like an old friend that you're seeing again, and you're like. Yo, I know it's like a bike. And I love, I love this bike. I, I love how it fit. I fit on it, how I ride it. I love it. It's got me. Do you know what I mean? Like sure. it's that's that's that that's that companionship with art you're talking about, isn't it? Sure, for sure. And it's crazy to get back. You know, mm. I feel like not only did I get back from the beginning, but I'm kind of reliving it and doing it better this time you know in terms of just the art form of you know i'm starting at the most basic point i haven't stopped making beats you know not because i didn't want to i make things here and there but i really decided to focus on djing and and that's what started for me back in the beginning at first it was a very simple setup two turntables and whatever records i can afford and a mixer um and it took me many years to go from that to a battling bedroom dj to someone who started buying samplers and collecting breaks and so, you know, I, I feel like I've been starting to inch back into making beats a little bit more and more because um, I teach that as well. So I have to stay sharp at that. I mean, I, I stay on it just because I need to be sharp as a teacher because I teach Ableton and Serato Studio at the school as well. Nice. So, so you know, I, I'm kind of, I don't think I want to purpose I'm going in chronological order, but I am going in the order that makes sense. So I've been feeling very much more secure about my DJing skills again. A lot of work to still do. Mm. But with that, my mind is starting to go in that place to make beats again and stuff, you know. But I think, um, you know, going back to what you were saying, if I do have that warm, fuzzy feeling about things that I don't do as much, you know, when I think about being on the road, it's been a while. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And, and I, that same, I used to love that. I, you know, yeah. I think about my, some of the best times of my life being in recording studios and making music with, with Evan Rock and so many incredible other artists is, mm. is something I miss, that life, rap life, you know, it's, mm. you know, I definitely, you know. You mean that full-time b-boy making noise life? Oh, man. You know, <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know what, I'm still very much in touch with all my bros, you know, yeah. you know, Alchemist killing the fucking game, my bro, you know mm. what I'm saying? Evidence is, has an amazing solo career, you know what I'm saying? Like, Rock is just the most musically insane brother. I love I those guys. Um, I do. And, and, you know, and I just, you know, just I, I lived that life for a while, having a studio in the city and, and just being a studio rat, making solo albums, producer albums. Um, and I miss that whole thing. I miss being on tour buses. But, you know, it was a different part of my life. But I did leave. I do feel like, you know, when things make sense for, for Ev, Evidence and Rock and I, you know, we're there, you know, we didn't break up or anything. So, mm. you know what I mean? Like that door is always open, whether it's doing a show or making music. We, we've we now have other things in our life where that pressure of having to be successful to support each other through that hard time on capital, you know, we freed ourselves of that. Do you, you still know? speak to them all the time? Do you speak to them frequently? Yeah, I don't, you know, I'm not going to say like, we, you know, we all live pretty far when, you know, cats have children now as well. And, mm different things but you know we definitely stay in touch um that's cool and you know like i said like now when we do shows or we do any work you know it's not based on like oh we got to make ends meet bro you know what i mean mm -hmm. you know or, or feeling like oh man like the pressure to like 
make sure that we're all good. Mm. You know, we, you know, we went out that last album and with rhyme sayers and we, we promised ourselves to record the best album we could and, and go and work it hard for a year. And then from there we were going to just, you know, we're here. Mm-hmm. And we, we'll take it, we'll take it, you know, offer to offer opportunity to opportunity. And, and it's been all love. But, you know, I think we did it at a time where, you know, we wanted to leave still being friends, you know what I mean? Not that yeah. dialogue done, but you know, we, we de- definitely did it at a point where we, we cared about our relationships with each other outside of the music. You know, we still want to be able to see each other and see each other's kids and be cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, some people might think that we didn't push it as hard or as far as we could have, but you know, I, I, I I'm so proud of what dialect has done and, and what it's become. And I do miss, I do miss that, you know, a bit, but, um, you know, after living that life for like 20 plus years, it's nice to have a consistent schedule. You know, it's nice. Yeah. To and, and, uh, I actually craved having a system to follow or something. Yeah. Like that. You know, it's like, I lived so many years, just like from one day to, to, to the next, it was just always something different, you know? For like, you. And you don't have a schedule and you don't realize, because when you got, when you haven't got a schedule, you think, what, well, here, actually, I think, and this is what I used to think, very similar to how you approached the, oh, I don't need to practice. It's gone. I don't need to learn. This is cool. Right. Discipline to me back then and I think I can speak for everybody. It's uh, why do I need a schedule? Like I know what I'm doing. It's all in my head. I've got it together. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But with restriction comes that creativity, and you actually do more with the schedule of, sure. and a little bit of restriction. You end up doing more, don't you? You have to, you know. And you know, I I, I smoke a lot of weed still too. So it's like really, <laughs> you, know, you know, you have to. You know, it's something you learn over the years, and you know, more power to people who don't have that problem you know what i mean but i'm i really came from being like just loosey-goosey with it you know and it was just kind of like i said the nature of my lifestyle like Mm. you know we obviously had a certain amount of organization you know for us to even reach any of the the levels that we reached but you know when you have a big record deal i could afford a manager an accountant a lawyer a da 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 and then this and the the tour manager and a booking agent and we know we had we had things you know, we had a, we had a machine, you know what I mean? Uh, so well old as well. Yeah. You know, and now it's, it's, it's a much different thing. You know, obviously I'm, I'm a business owner and I'm an instructor, so it's a whole different vibe, but you know, all the experience that I learned, um, and, and, and everybody in the beach junkies, you know, I think that's a big thing to our school. You know, we don't milk it, but you know, our reputation and the, and the quality work we put in for, for the last, whatever, 30 years now, mm-hmm. um, you know, if that's, it really, really helps. You know what I mean? If I was Joe sure. Schmoe trying to open a DJ school, that must be a really hard uphill battle. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You, you know, we, but we don't really, you know, we don't want to live off the hype. You know, if it gets people in the door, cool. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I can't say enough about like our curriculum and really the, the just the customer service we give to our students. Bro, like, you're making me want to get, because I've got some decks now. You're making me oh. want to get on and do it. <laughs> oh, I mean, let me know. Got, yeah, I want this. No, no, it's it's a it's a, it's amazing what we do, man. And it's like mm. we really strip down DJing to the very core things, and we start them on vinyl, bro. I've got like, you know, I've got like middle aged, you know, women, you know, doing uh, four bar manual loops, bro. Like learning about <laughs> Grant, learning about Grant was a Theodore, and you know what I mean, and really appreciating the culture and. You know, at, at, at after about the four or five month mark, they, they bring in laptops and we teach them the future. We teach them the Serato and we kind of like bring them to this place where, you know, everything's future proof. You know, you're going to really learn who you whose shoulders you stood on. You know, we focus on mechanics, techniques and history. So there's, wow. a, you know, through every step we, we try to draw parallels and, and you know, you know, put light on our, our, our OGs and our big, mm. you know, our forefathers and oh, yeah. you know, let them know they're connected to something, you know, whether you become a big, huge DJ in a, whatever genre you want to be, you know, at least you're tied down to this and, you know, your foundation is coming from this. Cause it's, it's crazy when you look around DJ, most yeah. people started off as like some kind of hip hop, scratchy DJ, you know, 100%. You, go, yeah. you go to some like big, crazy dance producer, like, Man, them fools are probably scratching on bionic booger brakes like 20 years ago, bro. It's, 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 yeah. it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? But I think, you know, that's the entry level drug into this whole self-taught bedroom electronic musician kind of world. It usually yeah. starts with sampling, you know what I mean? So, 
you know, it's really amazing to see, like, I, I'd love to breed a champion out of our school one day or mm -hmm. someone who goes on to be an amazing DJ. But, you know, I think what a lot of people walk out of with is just, you know, it's kind of, I get a lot of students where this is self-care. This is their surfing. This is their, you know, CrossFit. This is the time where they forget about their job and their stress and they come in here and it's for them. And it's pretty amazing, man, because none of them really have goals on really going out here and doing this, but they walk out of the confidence. And I'm surprised at how many of my students are out there doing legitimate DJing work, you know, mm. some of them are really going there and it's, it's pretty amazing, man. But I'm most schools turn people out. Like if they could turn people out in, in six months, mm. they call them a DJ, they would, you know, our experience is looking more about a two year journey and my students are waiting for us to build something for them to stay longer. You know, and it's, and it's more than just the learning, obviously there's learning going on, but like, you know, there's lifelong friendships being forged. There's, there's other crews being formed. It's a community thing. It's, it's a community. A very much community -based thing. There's a lot of support here and it's been, it's been really awesome, man. It's a, it's a real labor of love. You know, there's no other way to describe what we're doing at the school. My whole staff is amazing. You know, there's obviously the junkies, but we do have a, a staff of uh, staffers who just love everything we've created and it goes a long way man there's a oh, lot so in, in the whole place so but yeah um now i'm not sure who i spoke to it was either rep matic or it was mr thing or somebody it was somebody reasonably close close to us and uh because the question came on beat junkies flying out of the u.s and the only t one time somebody one of the guys here recollected it was Amsterdam and uh, you guys got like super high on weed or something, <laughs> you, you know, and that was the only time Sounds I like think us. on measure, <laughs> on measure that you guys, cause you, you weren't, you, you didn't collectively, cause there's a lot of you, wasn't there? You didn't collectively, uh, um, you know, push forth and in, in, in coming out of the States. It, yeah. It, it was felt like, individual, but we had little, yeah spurts or moments obviously i think the answer in time you know was probably still a battle i know yeah. we went back and you know and sometimes it, it might have been two of us it might have been three of us you know and yeah. it might have been so and so supporting this mc and you know there was always weird configurations happening but i remember in around 2012 for our somewhere in 2012 for our 20th anniversary we, we did do a small european run and we uh, we played the jazz cafe and it was myself uh it was myself j-rock repmatic and melody i want to say and Raka could have been with us as, as host wow we did a couple of festivals a couple nights but we were in london at the jazz cafe for one night um but yeah we we probably could have did more but you know after our battle days it's like the directions we all went in was melody was mixing every day on the big mm. radio station here and then he was actually on a on a television show a late night television show you know, J-Rock started becoming the stone throw DJ of sorts, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. for for Black Star and, you know, later on Mad Lib and, and Dilla. Um, Matt. Rhett, you know, Rhett Maddock, obviously, amazing career with the Visionaries. So we always started just like kind of branching out all while still repping the Beach Junkies, you know what I mean? But yeah, you guys, uh, the, the way I tough. see... I went off and dilated, so like a lot of time, we yeah. had a lot of opportunity at that time and you know, you know, something I, I I do have a little regret about. I wish there was more time that we could have actually went out as beach junkies more. But you know what, though, um, I when I think of beat junkies, it's very much like I'm trying to think of equivocal. I mean, it's kind of a rock steady thing. It's like it's it's like you guys are like an organization. You guys have got the the silver coin. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, right. and then you know the scratch pickles and 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 the. And the other, you know, the, the, there's so many others, but I, I just feel like. I, I, I think I know what you mean. You know what I mean? I think just the vast number of us and, and you know, the the broad scope of our skills too, you know, because all of us not weren't, weren't necessarily, oh yeah, we'll fuck it up. But then a lot of us really might've been the strength, but would have been party rocking or, yeah, you know, other things, just, you know, being, having a crazy music knowledge. There's other things mm -hmm. that, you know, probably didn't get as much light um, as, as, the scratching and the battling stuff, you know, so we always had a broad crew, but, you know, I, I think too, you know, cause out of that whole heyday, you know, scratch pickles really 
made a lot of noise. Obviously, the mm. executioners, you know, rest of these executioners, the, yeah, they were a lot of noise. Allies but, as well. We got to throw uh, allies in and scratch oh, perverts, of course, and perverts. You know, and, but one thing I, I am proud to say, and I don't mean this to knock any other crews, but you know, and I, I being like one degree separated, I know both those crews had a lot of ups and downs personally. And that's from that pressure we're talking about. That's that's from that pressure of saying, I'm going all in on this group or this project or this, you know, whatever we're doing. Where Beat Junkies, you know, like I said, I do have a little regret that we didn't do more. But at the same time, I feel like, you know, we came back in a really strong way. And our, our strong, you know, and our crew is stronger than ever in a lot of different ways that I think that maybe we saved ourselves some of that pressure that might have broken our crew down that maybe a lot of other bands and other people i mean that's a risk you take when you when you go all in on something but when i think we started going all in as as a crew the beach junkies or as a company i should say more so was when we started our record pool in 2012 you know that's when things really changed for us i think that's when we started putting in that commitment and energy into beat junkies that the invisible scratch pickles put into themselves or the executioners put into themselves. We didn't do it until 20, 20 years later, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess, you know, the world works in funny ways. I think we were always even, and I love those guys. Those are all my big bros. You know, I have so much, so many fond memories of those guys. And they're so inspiring. I can go on and on about the X-Men and the, and the pickles, man. Love them. But, but I always felt like we were the junkies, you know, after that era, we were kind of the, uh, you know, the third choice. When it came to, oh man, if the X Men and the Pickles can't make it, let's call the Junkies. You know, whether it be a mixer company who wanted to sponsor us, or maybe a promoter on a gig, and you know, we we never really thought anything of it. We always thought we had a different kind of skill set and brought something to the table different. Mm. You know, so you know, and it's it was all good. So, but you know, twenty some odd years later, you know, us doing what we do now and and, and still making a cultural impact in in like the purest way of just giving. Um, I'm so proud of, you know, what me and my crew are doing. I, I say that on the complete humble because I never thought we would be like this. You know, oh, I mean? you, I'm, I'm I, saying. Was always, I was always the most pure artist, like, fuck this, fuck that. We got to keep it real. We got to like, do this shit legit. No one, no one knows <laughs> our styles and see. I was that guy. In fact, the guys bag on me. They think they make they make so many jokes of me because how my mentality has changed so much. You know what I mean? I, I put out a project over the last year. Or so my Melvin edits flips and remixes, which is kind of more of a house vibe nice you know, the guys that really loved it and they, they were the ones who inspired me and encouraged me to make it but you know after it comes out you know they'll, they'll make this there's a little inside joke with the guys go oh man you're making house beats babu and j-rock will say something like oh man fat beats babu wouldn't like that you know what i mean and <laughs> so they always make these they always make these references to fat beats babu you know what i mean they see yeah let's get into that let's get into fat beats babu man because <laughs> dude like you were the man you were the, you were to me anyway. You, that, the, the, by the, the 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 embodiment of fat beats. You know what I mean? Oh, and I I have nothing but you know. Shouts out to my brother DJ Jab and the whole Fat Beats you know crew mm. of years and family. Um, but you know, at Fat Beats, you know, played a really important part. You know, in my career, my development, man. You know, I was a young DJ coming up, just making noise. I started entering battles, putting out mixtapes. This must have been around 95, 94, mm. I'm talking about, and. I went to New York for my first battle. Um, you know, I, I had placed second in the DMC West Coast. You know, Shortcut was first. I was second. Third place was DJ Disc. And I would somehow won myself a, a trip to the DMC USA finals, like in 95. And, you know, you know, a lot of young cats don't understand how battles were back in the day before the internet, Kella. You know, it's mm. like, like if you, to even find out about the battle, when you found out about it, it usually was already six months past. You know, what I mean? there was no, you had to be, you know, in a certain click or circle to even find out about things. You know, it wasn't like the internet it was, you know, it wasn't just social media telling you what was popping or YouTube, you know? Mm-hmm. So I somehow managed to work my way into even knowing some of these cats entering this battle, somehow placing second, all of a sudden I'm going to New York and I'm sharing a, an apartment with shortcut, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I knew shortcut, we were cool, but I didn't really know him like that. So I was like, <laughs> hanging out with my bro shortcut you know we've been tight friends ever since but it was a mind-blowing trip not only was i there with shortcut i was battling against rock raider i went to rock raider's crib and i met rob swift and i met you know yo that's crazy 
so crazy. Like these are dudes who were just on videotapes to me, you know, like just months before, you know, something I would watch before school eating cereal. I'd be watching them on battle tapes. Oh man. And here I am watching them. They know me. They've seen my work. And it was crazy, you know? So during wow. that, the big thing that happened as well is we heard about this new record store that had opened up in Soho called Fat Beats. Mm. They had taken over, Oh, you know, this is, oh, they took over Bobito's old shoe store. Bobito moved to another spot. And this Fat Beats place opened up. It's crazy. They got spray can tips. They got 12 inches of all the latest shit and yada, yada, yada. Mm. So we went over there and we walk in. Not only was it everything we expected, but on the TV screen in there, the owner, or the, the shop manager was playing the West Coast DMC battle. Me and Short were just in to get to New York. Wow. And, and that's when I first met my friend Joe, DJ Jab. He was like, yo, Shortcut Babu, what's up? What's going on? You know, and from there, I, I made friends with Joe. I entered that battle. I lost, obviously. Raider went on to go take it. You know, rest in peace, my, my brother Rock Raider. Um, mm -hmm. But for me, it was, it was just like a, a real awakening. And not only that, but why I tell the story is that's where I met Joe. You know, like two months later, I get a call from Joe from New York for Fat Beats, DJ Jab. He's like, hey, man, I'm thinking about opening up a branch of Fat Beats in L.A., and I really don't know anybody. Would you like to manage it? <laughs> and for yeah. me, I'm, I'm, I'm like 19 years old. I'm still living in my mom's crib, working at the gas station, and, and, and any, other time, any other time I have is spent DJing or buying records, getting ready to, for the next battle. Like, I was, I was at that place, Kella. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I was so about it. Like, eat, sleep, scratch, repeat, literally. And then... So I was like, this is perfect. Not only is this going to get me out of the suburbs, it's going to get me into to live in LA and manage this place that's going to, I, which I didn't know at the time, was just going to be home base for the West Coast independent underground. Totally, totally. You know, so that changed my life. You know, you know Joe and Fat Beats gave me the opportunity to relocate to live in the city and completely immerse myself and everything I wanted. At that point, I dreamed of DJing for a rap group. I somehow meet dilated peoples because they want to leave their records on consignment at the record store that I'm managing. Well, that becomes yeah. the main portal for people to meet each other, isn't it? It was a, it was a mean, social place. It's, as corny as it sounds, I mean, for graffiti writers, for, for MCs, the, the whole culture was there. I mean, mm. we didn't necessarily, I think b-boying was the only thing that probably wasn't in there, but it wouldn't be weird for a b-boy to come by. Mm. Um, but it became that spot for everything, everything hip hop. It was it was beautiful, and and actually the wow. funny thing is that is the root for a lot of things. Um, like I said, a, that was a big part leading me to become part of Dilated Peoples. Um, but what I didn't realize when I first opened that store, uh, we first started in a little shop that was inside another shop um, called X Large. Now X Large was the Beastie Boys. That's quote, right, quote. and. So Joe, to get his feet wet, because he was still early in his business, they were going to give us the little upstairs loft. And he hired me and another gentleman by the name of Mar Marvsky to, to manage this little small, I mean, it must have only been like, shit, like, a, I don't know, 100 square feet. It wasn't shit. It was yeah. tiny. It was, it was a little <laughs> space in the back of inside of a store. And we, you know, within a year... I, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I started throwing events. I started doing all the marketing. I started literally growing this this business little by little. Wow. We, we, we Within a year, we moved down the street into a, our own building in a bigger spot, the classic Vermont Fat Beats yeah, yeah, in yeah, LA. Yeah. Um, and I knew at that point, I, I definitely was in over my head, Kella. I was like, Okay, I could. I, I was doing okay managing this little record store where I only had so many titles that we could carry. You know, mm -hmm. I in, in the, here, you're gonna bug out on this. Here's another loose connection because I was also starting to learn how to be a record buyer and work with distribution. Guess who I started being on the phone with all the time? This guy named Peanut Butter Wolf. Stuff it. Because he used to work at one of these um, New Groove. He used to work at New Groove Distribution. Wow. That was another seed that was planted. And guess what? I came from Oxnard and my good buddies, uh, the Loop Pack, were out there. And I used to always tell. Oh, my God. About, man, you got to hear, hear, hear Mad Lib and these, and these cats, Loop Pack, my homies out here. So a lot of people Stop don't really know. Stop it. So you were, the, you were the plug? I, I don't even want to say that. I, you know, that's corny for me to even say that. Wow. But I remember coming from where I originally lived was the 805, you know, which... 
you know, I, I dwelled a lot in the city of Camarillo and the city of Oxnard. And I was a disciple of cats like Can Kick and Mad Lib, mm. EJ Roms. They were they, they were like the shit for they many shit out there. Right. But we were out in the cut. And um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say, you know, I was the plug, but I know everywhere I went and we're talking about what the fuck is up with new hip hop. Take me two seconds to be like, oh, you ever heard of fucking Mad Lib? You heard of Loop Pack? Mm-hmm. Whether it was Wolf or not, I was just shouting. You can ask, you can ask um, J Rock and the, the guys. I would always be, oh man, you got to hear my homie, homie Otis, my homie, um, my homie Can Kick, my mm-hmm. homie Teddy. You know what I mean? I would always talk about these cats around my way. So that was another seed that got planted around that time. Wow. But you know, going back to Fat Beats, the crazy thing is what it leads to now, and and what the story I'm talking about is like, I. I our store was much bigger. All of a sudden we had this much more space to carry this. Much yeah. more stuff. And I've only been a record store manager and buyer for like a year. So I already knew I wasn't capable of doing this. And I was still trying to DJ, you know, I still had mm. all these opportunities. I'm making beats. I'm meeting more and more people. You know, this seemed more like it was a full-time thing, but it was more of a side hustle for someone who didn't have any responsibilities, you yeah. know, kind of 50% of my time. So I knew I needed to bring someone in who really knew this business. And I went to the other record store that I love to go to, another L.A. classic spot, Aaron's Records. There was a gentleman over there, my buddy, who always hooked me up. He was that guy, the hip-hop buyer. I'd walk in, and all I have to do is go, what do I need? He gave me doubles of everything I needed. I didn't even He's need to there. <laughs> And this gentleman was a name, goes by the name of DJ Silos. So... I said to my man, Joe in New York, I go, I need to bring someone in to really take this to that level, Joe. I'm not going to front. I, I'm not a record buyer. I am a DJ. I know what's up, but we need someone who's really good. And there's this gentleman, Carlos, who's been helping me for years. He's perfect. So I got them to meet. Before you know it, Los, who'd been working at Aaron's many years, came to be the manager and the record buyer at Fat Beats. You know, when I was like assistant manager at that point, I kind of stepped down because mm-hmm. Dilated started picking up and all these other, opt- I started DJing on the radio and all these other things started happening. So it was perfect. And me and Los went on to like, before there was that term, we just started community building back then. You know, I think mm-hmm. of all the parties, all the events, all the in-stores we threw, you know, we started getting on a first name basis with all of our customers. I knew this guy would come on Tuesdays and, 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 and buy X amount of records, and this guy comes on so Friday. Oh, good. Check. I know this guy's coming off this bus from down there to go buy fat, fat caps because he's going to go bomb for the weekend. Like it was beautiful. And so when we came to reopen, fast forward to 2020, excuse me, 2017, when we're opening up the Beach on Kansas City Sound, I went through my Rolodex and I, I connected with with Silos. And, and then Silos is a big part of my school now here at the Beach on Kansas City Sound. He's our general manager, an amazing wow. instructor. But he helps a lot with the community building, which is such a big part of what we do now. And it's weird. 20 years ago, I was training myself for this mm. and already kind of like understanding that mentality of a retail community kind of thing. So I didn't even think about it at the time we opened up the school, but I felt like it was something that I could do beyond the teaching. I, you know, like at the school, my responsibilities are top to bottom, you know, out of the guys, you know, some of the guys run the record pool. Some of the guys run the online school. I guess I'm one of the guys, my responsibility is school. So it made perfect sense to me now in retrospect, but I didn't realize I had developed all these skills and tools. That led um, you on the way to this point. Yeah, that helped us develop this business and our approach, you know, because, you know, we, we're not the first ones to, to do a, a DJ school, Kelly. In fact, we're, we're far from the first, but I don't think anyone's doing it like we are, bro. And I don't, and I'm not tooting our horns and being in full modesty. Uh, from the experience to the curriculum, like I've said, man, we yeah, just yeah. left no stone unturned and we're constantly improving this experience and everything day by day. Um, and yeah, I couldn't be more proud of, of, of what me and the junkies are doing now, man. We, we, wow. you know, we, 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 we ain't quite there yet and I don't think we'll ever be done, but I'm um, really, really proud of where we've taken our, our business and, and where we've taken our reputation. So the future's bright. Very, very, man. Very, man. I'm really excited about it, man. I'm just excited to be, back in love with my first love again yeah and it just it just feels so right i've never been this close to the turntables I, since like 92 i haven't felt like this compulsive obsessiveness that we've talked about it's back yes in a, in a different form but yeah man that's fantastic brother the future's bright so what so what what do we expect in the next i mean with 2022 now I feel like when you touch on surface but the beautiful thing about this conversation is it feels unlike 
you know, old friends such as yourself, when we, we step into these conversations, we, we always step in, in with half an understanding of each other because we've had a, a history in, in one form or another at one time or another. The, the amazing one about this conversation is that you're leaving, you, you like to your own admission, you're like, you're, you're restocked, you're rebranded, you're, you're in a new creative headspace and you're excited. And, it, you know, it, it's, it, the, the future, we could have a part two probably in six months' time and there'd be a whole heap of new stuff that you discovered. It's crazy. What's the future going to, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd like to think like, you know, I, I don't know how far we could take this, but I definitely do want the school to grow. I'd love to get into a bigger space and, and have, you know, more classrooms and more space, and a bigger staff. Um, love to train more teachers who could pass down the art, you know, the right way mm-hmm. and, and, and build it bigger. I wouldn't mind seeing a beach junkie and Sue sound in every major city around the world. It really is, is, is really where I see taking it. Um, you know, that's a, that's a big lofty goal, but you know, that's kind of my style. I always just kind of shoot big and, you know, if mm-hmm. I fall short then I'm less, then I'm less uh, upset, I guess, <laughs> but you know, but I really, um, I want to continue doing what I do. I, I become much more picky with my DJing. I've never liked that pressure of having to cater to a room. I, I really only pick gigs where they let me do me. So mm-hmm. I want to say, um, because it's, it's it's not like I'm over here pole vaulting. I can DJ as long as I got two hands and and two arms and two legs. I'm going to be DJing till I die. Um, That's what we like to hear over here. I, I, I want to be say I want to make more music. So as far as Babu goes, the artist, I want to say I'm going to like still be doing that and doing it on my own terms as I feel, um, as I feel like uh, you know it's necessary. I don't I don't really want to make music or do anything creative because. I need to make a paycheck. I don't want that to be my sole motivator. You need that a little bit, you know, just to get you up off your ass and work every day. That's not a bad thing, but it can't be my sole thing. You know what I mean? Whatever I create and put out, it's got to have that love that we talked about. That's right. But, but, uh, but I really want to take my, um, you know, I really think we created something. I really would like to put the curriculum we've built um, at the Beach on and Sue Sound into a book. I would love to lecture and go on book tours and really talk about, you know, I think we made a lot of breakthroughs on how to, to present the art form of DJing and then our style of DJing. So, you know, I love to like, you know, tour colleges, you know, get, you know, create something where, I, you know, we could be um, seen or heard, you know, from mm-hmm. higher education you know, and take it to a, a higher level. I'd love to get published and really take it there as well. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of goals, a lot of goals. And, um, you know, I hope, just to, to keep the the beat junkie brand and the businesses, you know, growing slowly but surely and, and and staying relevant and making an impact and helping future DJs along, you know. You know, I'm gonna have to talk to you about getting into some of these classes now. <laughs> Bro, anytime. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, brother. Any shout outs you want to give? Any shout outs to the peoples? Oh man. Shouts out to you, of course. Killer Keller, my brother, really great at reconnecting. But always shouts out to Evidence and Rock and my dilated people's bros. Of course, shouts out to my whole Beat Junkie family. Um, what can I say about my crew? You see them all over. If you're not following everybody, mm-hmm. um, follow them, see what they're doing. People are streaming, people are gigging everywhere. Um, shouts out to my whole BeatJunkies.tv home roomies. I see all y'all out there. And of course, uh, all my students at the Beat Junkie Institute of Sound and my whole staff and crew at Beat Junkie Institute of Sound. And, uh, yeah, man. I'm Babu. Yeah. Appreciate you, my brother. My brother. Ladies and gentlemen, get, get Babu. We are out like in was out of fashion. You stay lucky, people. Take care of yourselves. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Peace.